Hello, welcome to TechWeb Dots. Today I am going to show you how we can use transaction in ASP.NET Core with Entity Framework. So let's start without wasting time. So you can see all the green builds I have already covered in my previous sessions. If you are interested in any of them, check out the link which is given in the description of this video. So in the current session, we are going to discuss transaction. So let's move ahead. If you have basic understanding of how ASP.NET Core application works, that will be very helpful. So if you to completely focused on transaction with every access of the database using entity framework, a transaction is involved too. Means whatever operation performing with the help of entity framework, we are already using transaction. All versions of entity framework wrap each call to save changes or save changes async in a transaction means internally they are using transaction as well and the isolation level of these automatic transactions is the same as the default isolation level for database which is read committed for sql server so if you are not aware about the isolation level so i have the detail for you you can take a pause of this screen and read out the complete detail but let me read the one which is a very famous which is read committed which says wait for the record with a write lock from other transactions this way a dirty read cannot happen this level sets a read lock for the current record read and a write lock for the record being written until the transaction is completed during the reading of a sequence of record with every new record that is read the prior record is unlocked that's why non-repeatable reads can happen so this is the uh, definition of read committed you can need other ones as well okay so before moving to the practical session so let me uh, give you few more details which are very very important you should not miss them so let's move ahead so you can use transaction implicitly or create them explicitly in entity framework core with configuration as needed okay so if i talk about the implicit transactions as invocations of the save changes async method automatically resolve to one transaction as i said earlier it automatically calls internally transaction okay if one part of the changes that needs to be done fail for example because of database constraints all the changes already done are rolled back this is already implemented okay create creating explicit transactions you can also create them explicitly this gives you the advantage of also having the option to roll back in case some of your business logic fails and you can combine multiple invocations of save changes async with one transaction so you have more control on your transaction this is the main advantage if you want to specify explicit transaction don't worry if these things are not clear i will explain again and again in the practical session okay to start a transaction that is associated with the db context drive class you need to invoke the begin transaction async method of the database packet class that is returned from the database property okay with the begin transaction async method you can also supply a value of the isolation level yes you can manage them to specify the isolation requirements and logs needed in the database the transaction return implement the interface idb uh, context transaction now it's time to practical implementation but before that uh, one more point is to commit or roll back you have to explicitly invoke the methods commit or roll back commit is done when the end of db context scope is reached and roll back is done in case where an exception occurs okay so there are a uh, few this is the very important table at the bottom and the following uh, this table summarize a problem that can occur as a result of setting the most commonly used transaction isolation levels okay so if you can see the which is very famous one which is read committed in that case there is no dirty read where we can say n is written over there and there is non read non repeatable reads 
is yes it is possible and if you will see phantom reads yes it is possible okay so let's switch to visual studio to have uh, a look all these things in a practical manner this is my visual studio and i am using the same solution that i was using in my last video okay so if you are following along so you can see this is a typical uh, asp.net core mvc and it framework core application where we have models views and controllers you can see book controller is there models we have book and in views we have all the views in data access we have context we have repository as well okay now if you will go through the controller we have typical implementation like index detail create action edit action and delete action okay and the in the post one we are calling the update book okay and save i think we are calling so i will uh, demonstrate all all this example but before that let me show you how it's working let me run this application now finally launched so this is a simple book management system as you can see we have five records of books we have title and publisher and we have three actions edit details and delete so if i modi modify one of them which is title 5 and if i modify just give 51 and save it so it is working as expected okay so let me close this browser and make the changes okay it is coming back so this is the save async method where i will show you how we can implement explicit transaction because internal is already working okay so let me make the changes quickly just interest of time so let me add the changes here in this method okay so uh, let me uh, comment this one because we don't want to call this okay and here uh, you can see what we are doing in save async we have created one integer variable to return the integer result okay and we are creating idb context transaction which i was discussing about in the presentation and initially we are initializing with null value and it is saying instance of this class are typically obtained from a database packet being transaction and it is not designed to be directly constructed in your application code means we will use this tx variable to initialize the begin transaction and calling commits and rollback okay so first we will create this uh, idb uh, context uh, variable with null okay and then we are uh, using a statement and in that we are initializing this tx variable with awaitable begin transaction method okay and after that we are performing our operation that we want to perform in if everything is okay we can commit we will call this method tx.commit everything is done and we can return the integer result from here and if there is any issue if there is any exception while it is updating the database so we can catch up that exception or you can specify multiple versions of catch block as well according to your need so here i am just catch catching the error message as of now it is uh, saying okay there is some issue let me solve it okay now uh, reds are gone so now we can see we can get the error message and what is our inner exception we can also catch them so it is we are just using internally and if because of the issue we can roll back this one as well so this is a very simple story let, let, let me save all changes and let me run it once again and it should work as it as it was working before now application launched successfully now if we'll again modify this record which is titled 51 we'll click on edit and let me uh, make it correct sequence save it see it is working as expected so let's close this browser okay so this is a piece of code which is very important so let's go back to the presentation now I hope you like the video thanks for watching and if you have any suggestion any comment you can write into the comment box i will try to respond as soon as possible and in the next section we will discuss entity state and change tracking in entity framework core and your feedback is very important that's the only inspiration for me to create such videos if you like this hard work hit the bell icon subscribe and share with your circle thank you bye bye